for the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge for the poor and decide with equity for the oppressed of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion will feed together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. So ends the reading.
Our gospel reading comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around the Jordan were going out to him. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming for his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Therefore, bear fruit worthy of repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now, the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But the one who is coming after me is more powerful than I, and I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. I have a question for you. Have you ever been on the receiving end of the silent treatment? I have, probably deservedly too, but I will admit that as an introvert, the first few bits of the silent treatment are kind of nice. <laughs> but eventually, silence becomes powerful, doesn't it? It becomes unnerving. It causes us to feel uneasy and might even drive us to look for a way to break that silence, even if we're an introvert. I want to share with you some words from the Old Testament book of Malachi. Because I think it's important to help set the stage for the understanding of what took place when the John the Baptist showed up. You see, the nation of Israel or the people of Israel or the Jewish people were used to getting messages from God. They were used to having prophets come and speak to them throughout the years. And with the prophet Malachi, who is the last prophet of the Old Testament, he prophesied these words at the close of his ministry. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. 
And then there was silence. Not just for one year, not just for ten years, not even for a hundred years. There was four hundred years of prophetic silence. And that set the stage of this great deal of anticipation of God. Why are you so quiet? When are you going to speak to your people again? You've got our attention, Lord. It's been 400 years. How about you say something to us? Some years ago, I experienced walking the Mackinac Bridge. That was fun. We started in St. Ignace, and we walked, and I concluded that I not only dislike walk or driving on the grate on the bridge, I don't like walking on the grate either. It's a long ways down. But as I came into Mackinac City, where we could take the, what is really an entrance ramp onto the highway, we could take that swoop and go into downtown Mackinac City, I was surprised. I wasn't expecting to be greeted by a half dozen people holding signs that said, repent or perish. And if I'm honest with you, I'm uneasy around that kind of situation, even though I'm a minister. That's just not my style. And I, thinking out loud, which probably means not thinking out loud, I'll just have to say that sometimes I wonder if that does more harm than good. I know I didn't want to listen to them. And I always feel like I need to let them know, hey, I'm on your side, but actually I just decide I don't even want to engage these people. And I just found my way downtown. Well, John the Baptist is very much that vocal person, but this is a different setting because he is fulfilling the ministry that God has given unto him. And God purposely set the stage to give silence so that people would pay attention when John the Baptist began speaking. And his opening words were, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. There's a few things for us to think about with those words. First of all, the meaning of repent means to literally change your mind or to change your direction. So, let me use an example. If you are driving north and you discover that you should be driving south, no matter whether you change your speed and slow down or speed up, you haven't repented. You're still going in the wrong direction. You just may not be going as fast in the wrong direction. Repentance involves pulling the car over and turning around and going in the opposite or the right direction and beginning to move there. C.S. Lewis gave another example. He said, in the field of mathematics, remember those dreary days when you had to have multiple steps to a math problem? And if there was a mistake somewhere up here, it didn't matter how far you continued those calculations, you were never going to get the right answer. You need to erase and you need to go back and correct the mistake and then to go on. And John the Baptist is telling us in this Advent season 
There is one coming greater than I, and we must repent to be prepared to receive this king. And I like the perspective that notice that he didn't say that the kingdom of heaven is coming. He said that it has come near. Beloved of God, I know I find myself sometimes thinking that the kingdom of heaven is way off or it's going to come at some other time. But John the Baptist says it's here. It's nearby. Elsewhere in the New Testament, it says that the kingdom of God is near you. It's even in your mouth. It's in the word of God for us to read and to draw near to God in prayer and in fellowship and in service. The kingdom of heaven is where the will of God is being accomplished. And John the Baptist is saying, get involved in the work of God and turn from being self-centered. I jokingly say that this is a favorite passage for frustrated pastors. Because now, with this passage, frustrated pastors get to look at their congregation and say with all the passion that they need to, you brood of vipers. (laughs) I'm just trying to be humorous. Don't read any more into that. (laughs) But... It is important to note who is hearing the words, you brood of vipers. It's the group called the Pharisees and the Sadducees. It isn't the common folk that's being called the brood of vipers. It's not the people walking across Mackinac Bridge, the ordinary common person that's being called. It's the people who are the leaders of the institution. It's the people who think that they're already right with God and everyone else is wrong. This is where if we can't say amen, we whisper, oh my. Because the words of John the Baptist should cause us to look inside and say, am I deceiving myself? Am I thinking that I'm right with God when in fact I'm hearing the very message to repent for the kingdom of God has come near? You see, there is an unquenchable fire that should be burning up the chaff in our lives. I think a good litmus test is to ask ourselves, Do we find ourselves living a casual Christianity? Or are we consumed with a love for God and a desire to love and practice of loving our neighbor as we love ourselves? Are we bearing the fruit worthy of repentance? We might say, well, we go to church. That's about like saying if we go to McDonald's that we are hamburgers. Going to church is a great step. And we should go to church. Because we need each other. But that's a part of a practice But what we also need is a change of heart to make sure that we have, in fact, chosen to love the Lord our God with our heart, mind, and soul and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. John goes on to say that this is an urgent message And something to be heeded right away. Because he says the axe is right at the stump. Meaning, get your act together today. 
And if there's one thing that we can find throughout the scriptures, it is that God gives us the present time to act in the present time. Not to say tomorrow, but to say today. Throughout the book of Hebrews, it is written that today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as your ancestors did long ago. The axe is at the tree. I actually found, I happen to love icons like the Orthodox icons and that type of artwork. If you find some hanging in the church sometime, you'll know to blame me. I like, I just, it speaks well for me. And if you look at an icon, an Orthodox icon for the baptism of Jesus, which is what happens in the next few verses in Matthew, you'll find that Jesus is front and center and that he is being baptized But tucked away somewhere in that icon, you'll find a little tree and you'll find an axe laying beside it. I never knew that until I I began to prepare for this sermon. But I think what that reminds us is, hey, don't be casual. Don't let your guard down. Stay in the race. Allow God's fire to burn within you with a passion to bring goodness and to bring grace and to bring wholeness in the name of Jesus. I love a saying that says, we may be the only Bible that some people read. May they read of a loving God who calls us to service in his name to help the poor, to help the oppressed, to lift up the downtrodden, to shed the light of God's love and grace in the darkened corners of this world. There is a great need for God's unquenchable fire in our world. And our reading today gives us the opportunity to say, Lord, fill me with your fire and help me to be faithful in service to you wherever your spirit leads me. Amen. As we prepare for communion, uh, a few words of instruction. Um, The first is that this is the Lord's table. So this isn't Marty's table. It isn't Central's table. We believe that all who wish to be in love with God and who repent of their sin and wish to be in love and service to neighbor, that you are welcome to come to the table. Now we partake of, uh, by a way called uh, intinction, and that's a fancy way of saying that you get a piece of bread and you get to dip it in the cup and take it when, once you come up. We dismiss by way of the side aisles and come forward by way of the center aisle. I believe in back that there's some hand sanitizer, and I do suggest that you use that before you come. And it is helpful for me as I administer that if you hold your hands like this, because then we don't have to try to line up or such. I can just put that in your hands. And should you have the misfortune of when you dip the bread, that if it decides to disintegrate into a million pieces, don't try to fish it out. (laughs) Just feel free to get another piece of bread and try again. Now, should you wish uh, to have uh, gluten-free, come and let me know uh, when you come, and I do have some gluten-free bread 
available uh, for you. So once you partake, uh, then you can return back uh, to your seats. The last thing that I like to say is that those uh, who assist me, you'll find that I take communion first and that those who are helping me then partake of communion. And the reason we do that isn't because we want the choicest pieces of bread for ourselves. It's we're trying to teach a model, and that model is what we see throughout Scripture. You can't give what you don't have. That we receive Jesus first, and then once we've received Jesus, then we go out and we share Jesus. And so we will partake first, and then you are invited to come and partake. And then you are invited that when our time together is done, to go and share Jesus wherever God's Spirit may lead you. If there are those where it is helpful for us uh, to bring the elements to you, um, we will do that uh, after everyone else uh, has come forward. Uh, we'll gladly bring uh, the elements to you. We have a liturgy that we share together, and I invite you uh, to join me in the liturgy. Uh, beloved of God, the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Lift up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things. Your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. 
Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen and amen.
through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we will continue in our worship uh, of God uh, through our gifts and our offerings. Again, if you have a prayer request, be sure to drop that into the offering plate and the ushers will see to it uh, that I receive that. So at this time, I do invite our ushers to come forward. join me in the prayer of dedication found in your bulletin. Gracious God, you offer us a gift beyond price. Your son is like the sweet kiss of rain on a barren land. Your promised salvation is like the bread of heaven for those who are perishing. In gratitude for your abundant gifts, we commit ourselves to act justly in solidarity with the poor, and we pledge our assistance to those who are in need. May the gifts we bring before you this day hasten the day when none shall hurt or destroy on all your holy mountain. Amen. Please be seated. As we uh, gather for prayer, um, I'll be sharing some requests with you, and then when I pray, I'll be praying a petition that closes with the phrase, hear us, O God, and you are invited to respond with your mercy is great. So hear us, O God, 
I have received the following uh, prayer request. Please pray for the family of Jerry Largen as he passed away this week. Uh, we do want to continue uh, to remember uh, the family of Donna Burke uh, as we had her memorial service uh, yesterday. It was windy at the uh, committal service, uh, but uh, we had uh, a nice time of remembrance and celebration of her life and her testimony. And I am still moved by the fact that she sang for 62 years in the choir. And um, it's not too late for you to try to beat that record, so feel free to, to join in. I also have these uh, prayer requests uh, for us to continue to remember Dale Hornstra, uh, he is uh, receiving treatment uh, for cancer, and he and his wife uh, would appreciate, and their family would appreciate uh, your prayers. Uh, Frances Anderson passed away uh, yesterday. Uh, her daughter Nancy Wilson uh, and keep Don and uh, the family in our prayers. Carolyn Ayers passed away on November 15th. Her daughter is Samantha Morley. And so we ask, uh, been asked to remember this family in our prayers as well as Donna Morley's niece, Peggy Perkins, who is uh, undergoing uh, treatment on uh, Monday at uh, Mayo Clinic. I've also received a thank you from James and uh, for uh, our support and our uh, friendship, and thank you for sharing that, uh, James. Uh, God's continued blessings uh, on your life. And then I will just say I had the chance to dress uh, in Renaissance on Friday night at the Madrigal Dinner, and uh, Remarkably, they cast me as a priest, so I'm glad that I didn't walk up and they said, you look like a thief or something. And there were 300 people uh, that night. Uh, last night, I think 400, and I think they have a full house today. Let us continue to remember uh, hospice of, of the eastern upper peninsula and for the work uh, that they do. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all God's creation. God, our fortress, we pray for the church. Write your law of love on the hearts of your people and fill us with your unquenchable fire that we remain steadfast in our witness to your grace and goodness. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God, our liberator, we pray for your earth, that you bring new life to overused land and contaminated rivers, reform and reorient our relationship with the environment, that we may faithfully care for all of your creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of our refuge and strength, we pray for the nations. Where they are in an uproar, bring wise and righteous leadership and comfort for those who are in distress. Make wars to cease and peace to enter every land. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, our very present help in trouble, we pray for those in need. Show mercy to refugees and all fleeing from danger. Shelter any without homes and calm all who are facing illness, surgery, or a terrifying new diagnosis. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God, our Redeemer, we pray for our congregation. Open our hearts fully to your Holy Spirit and cause us to proclaim your word in, with great courage to wherever your Spirit leads us. Hear us, O God, 
your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, sharing together in the prayer that he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. By way of announcement uh, today, uh, following our service, uh, you can call it Super Sunday because we have soup downstairs. And you are invited uh, to come downstairs for a soup luncheon. Now, this did not make the announcements in my bulletin, but I believe we have something at 5 o'clock tonight. That is a yes. Yeah. So I, and I, that is a potluck. And a craft night? It's not a potluck. Okay. It is a craft activity night for Advent. All right. So we should eat before we... No. We have food. We have food, but we just don't need to bring it. Okay. Tina will be happy to hear that. Yeah. So, and, and again, that's at 5 o'clock, craft night. Very good. Thank you. Looking ahead to next Sunday, that is uh, when we get to light the pink candle. That's known as uh, joy, the joy candle. You are invited to dress joyfully. If whatever your favorite Christmas outfit is, or your ugliest Christmas sweater, hopefully we'll know the difference, <laughs> please feel free to just dress festively, because it's the joy candle. Uh, and I believe we also have some youth. Uh, instead of a youth message, we'll have a, a little program from our youth. So that should be uh, just a, a wonderful time. Also, uh, today is a deadline for ordering uh, poinsettias. Um, forms are at either uh, entrance. And I'd like to cast, if I may, a vision for Christmas Eve for you. I'd like for us to have a reception after our service. We get a lot of first-time guests, and Christmas Eve is a magical and a wonderful evening. And we have an opportunity to continue that magic and that wonder downstairs with a reception that will make people think about and talk about for days and days to come. And so I'm not thinking of pulling old 90-day cookies out of the freezer and having a pitcher of water. Um, I'm thinking this is something that we do like cheese ball and you know a, a nice hors d'oeuvre kind of thing. If that catches your vision and you say, gee, this sounds like a great party and I want to be a part of it, I have a deal for you. There's a sign-up downstairs where you can sign up to bring something. And it would really be helpful if someone said, I'm all on that vision and I'm willing to coordinate and set up uh, for that activity on the 24th. I can tell you from personal experience, I had two churches that practiced this um, before I came here. Connections were made with people after that service. This is a marvelous opportunity, not only to have a good time, but to do what we say we want to do. Build bridges, make connections, Let's do, let's do that and do that in a well and wonderful way. I also uh, do wish to mention uh, that next Sunday's brass band concert uh, is here. 
and that starts at 3 p.m. And I bet that they'll let you still wear your festive Christmas attire if, if you want. Are there any other announcements that I should highlight? With that, uh, I invite you to stand as you're able as we lift our voices in song for hymn number 213, Lift Up Your Heads, You Mighty Gates. Beloved of God, hear these words of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go forth in the peace of Jesus Christ. Amen.